What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today is feeding day at the facility. We're going to be uh, just feeding a couple snakes, select snakes, because really I feed on the uh, every other week. On this week, I usually feed whole back stuff and just select stuff that might I might think be a little on the thin side, needs an extra meal. And so we're going to be taking a look at that. And you never know what else I might find while I am feeding. So quick video today, midweek, and hopefully tomorrow we'll have a nice comprehensive long video. So you'll have a little bit more time. So without further ado, let's go and feed some snakes. All right, a little fish tank update. You know, I like to give you those every once in a while. Just did a little water change the other day. Tank was looking a little algae ridden. So when that happens, you got to do a big water change. I did about a half water change. Angels are looking really good. They get, look at that. They're getting so mature, they're actually getting a little hump on their head. Cichlids, which is the class of fish these are, will get a little, little big hump on their head. Usually the males do, um, but these angels are definitely ready to breed for sure. It's my little clown loach. I got my live plants are still hanging in there. And there's my discus. I do want to get another discus fish. He is doing pretty good, this guy. I had a little, uh, they weren't eating for a while. I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but now they're back again. So I might grab another discus, put him in there. Kind of thinned out the tank with all the plants too. So there's more room now in the tank. I'd like to get like a, a mother of pearl white discus. Maybe a pair of them, two of them. We'll see. Looking good. Over here in the turtle tank, uh, these guys are back in the water. So I've been treating them with antibiotics like I treat my snakes. This one turtle, my uh, Timor snake neck turtle, he's doing great. He never had any problems. He's been eating, eats bloodworms every day. These other guys, they were all hanging out. I showed you last week in the sand. They weren't going in the water at all, which usually means that they're having trouble breathing. So. I surmised that it must have been a respiratory tract infection, so I started treating with antibiotics. And I don't know, I, I think they might have eaten a little bit today, but I haven't seen them eating, but they're but they're all back in the water now, which is which is a good sign. Because usually they'll go out on the land to try to dry out their respiratory system. It doesn't really help, but you know, they don't realize that. So the fact that they're actually back in the water and, and actually doing stuff again rather than just burying themselves in that sand over there is got to be a good sign. So I'm going to keep treating them until I see them eating religiously and then I'll uh, then I'll stop the antibiotics. I can't tell you how many times I see this happen in my collection. And what I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about locks. I'm talking about snakes that theoretically were not doing so well. They're eating like crap. They had a little diarrhea or something like that. And I just, just put them together just because I thought maybe I can get them to start eating. They're locked. Female is small. She hasn't eaten in probably several weeks. <laughs> and she wants a breed. It's, it's crazy. It just goes to show you that when it comes to snake breeding, you just never know. And look, I, last year I had a, a female that laid a really nice four egg clutch. She hadn't eaten in two years. I, I, I can't figure it out. I can't explain it. I don't know. I don't make this stuff up. I just report it. Great lock there. I'm very happy that they're, you know, usually if snakes are breeding, it means they're in good health. But these ball pythons, sometimes they just don't want to eat. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know why. I haven't figured it out. Other ones eat fine. It's just happens. Don't get frustrated. It happens to us all. That's what you got to know. There's the proof. All right, a little breeding action. I don't see any locks here, but these guys are pretty close. They probably, I'm sure they were locked earlier, I think Pablo told me. This is my albino orange dream lesser female being wrapped up here by this leopard black pastel candy. So definitely some good potential to produce some really cool candino stuff here. Really nice. It's one of my favorite females and I almost sold her. Just goes to show you. Don't sell things you're not sure about. But yeah, this this would be a nice pairing for sure. We can get some, some eggs out of this. We could produce some 
Orange Dream Black Pastel Leopard Candinos. Woof, those will be smoking for sure. There's a nice little uh, pairing we got. This is an Enchi Butter with an Ivory Ultra Mill. So interesting, right? Everything's gonna be Yellow Belly. Everything's gonna be Het Ultra Mill. And then some stuff is gonna be Yellow Belly Enchi Butter Het Ultra Mill. So I thought that would be a cool combination to get Enchi and Butter into that Ultra Mill complex. Of course, uh, having the Yellow Belly in there is gonna be helpful too, because I have some Ultra Mill freeway stuff that I can always breed in here too. So sometimes you gotta think long term. That female's big though. I wouldn't be surprised if she's got some eggs in her already. I'm just keeping this male in here just to play it safe. Don't want to miss the uh, the ovulation. She does look big though. Look who's looking for food. I got to admit, Annie Hall is not going to get fed today because I've fed off all the rats already. I didn't. I only defrosted a couple. I didn't really. Tomorrow, next week is really my big breeding, eating or feeding week, I should say. She's like, all right, well, if you're not going to feed me, I'm going back onto the paper. <laughs> I may give her one tomorrow. Pablo likes to feed her. We could always defrost one. We'll, we'll defrost one for you tomorrow. We'll give you a nice jumbo. I haven't taken you out in a while anyway, so I got to take you out and show people how beautiful you are. Because you always hide under the paper, so we'll get her tomorrow. There's a nice paradigm blood female. She's getting ready to shed. She was just really blue-eyed, gray-eyed. She'll probably shed tomorrow, right? You guys don't know, right before they're about to shed, they actually go from like all foggy looking to almost looking normal. And then the next day they shed usually. So or that day they shed uh, right before they uh, slough off their skin. And there's, there's that male hanging on for dear life there. Hopefully he's going to get the job done. This is Paradigm Blood bred to a Hypo blood, it's parahet. So it's a hypo visual blood, so everything's gonna be blood here. Half of them will be hypo bloods, which are really beautiful, obviously. And then she's parahet, so I don't know if she's head, she's either head for sharp albino or she's head for bow woman caramel, depending on what he actually, he, excuse me, is, is head for. That will determine what the babies look like. So if, she, if he's head for sharp, we're gonna get Half sharp albinos, half paradigms. If he is het for Bowman and caramel, we're gonna get Bowman and caramels half, and we're gonna get half uh, paradigms. So, and of course, there's only a 50% chance of, of him throwing the, uh, the, the one gene. So, some of them will be visual, some will be hets, and they'll be parahets because she is a paradigm. And we won't know what she throws, either sharp albino or foam and camera. So sounds complicated, but it's really not that complicated. But needless to say, we could get some really nice babies. What I'm shooting for is hopefully shooting for would be some paraglow bloods, which are hypo blood paradigms. And I wouldn't mind any um, fire opals too. If we can get some of those, that's always good as well. So we'll keep an eye on these guys as the season progresses. And I've been showing you these guys every week just because I like to show you these guys. I don't even think they're locked. This just tells you how hard the, the males are working. That's what I really wanted to show you. These, this male really wants to breed this female really badly. And I don't know, I've seen some locks, but I mean, they never stop trying. And that's why they could sometimes burn themselves out. She actually looks like she's going to the shed, but she's the blackest snake. I have the blackest bow I have. He definitely wants to keep breeding her. I might have to give them a break where I actually give them a meal and separate them. I hate to do it when they're potentially breeding, but at some point we don't want this male to burn itself out and then he doesn't, he dies and then I don't have him for next season. So I'm glad that they're so interested in each other, but we'll just keep an eye on these guys. Once again, this is a red dragon, probably a hypo red dragon or sun dragon as they call it. And this is a IMG Roswell Latitail Motley double head red dragon. So head for albino, call albino, and head for blood. So really good pairing here. You know, if we get anything, that'll be great. If not, we'll have to wait till next year. 
This beautiful super mandarin belly leopard female is dying to eat. I know she smells those rats. I'm going to keep my distance from her. She definitely wants to eat. I don't usually feed my, my boas during the breeding season. I might give them a, a, an occasional meal, but I like to go eight weeks with nothing. So I really don't, I'm trying not to, to feed her. She's definitely hungry. You can see wrapped around that water bowl is the male. He's an albino eclipse or sun clips. So that's an albino motley leopard call albino. Um, so this, this could be a great pairing. I don't know if, you know, I had started breeding them at the end of last year and thought I saw some action, but I just kept them together pretty much. And um, we'll keep an eye on this if there's anything going on here. She doesn't seem to be uh, pregnant or anything like that. And I don't know if I really caught an ovulation from her. She's absolutely gorgeous. I really hope she breeds. I, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, hopefully getting her to produce some babies, especially with this male. I think we're going to have some really high-end stuff. Motley, mandarin belly, leopard stuff, because everything will be leopard. Everything will be at least mandarin belly. And then he is, so everything will be head albino. And then half of them will be motleys as well. So could have some really nice babies here. Looks like the scene of a murder here. <laughs> That's my, my beautiful super sun glow. Boa, my first boa, eating a nice jumbo rat. She deserves it. Um, I'll leave her alone, let her get this thing down. It's big. Hope she can get it down. It's a pretty big rat. She's big enough though. She can handle it. Although she's she's kind of missing the boat. She's got you got to get that they got to get that snout down your throat. You're not going to get it in that way. That's for sure. But who am I to tell the snake how to eat, right? All right, guys. That's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Uh, we had uh, you know just a little bit of breeding action. I got to show you a little bit of feeding action, a little bit of this, a little of that. Um, I always find it uh, interesting to kind of just film as I'm in the snake room, no agenda, no nothing. And sometimes those videos come out the best, you never know. Uh, it kind of depends on, you know, what kind of a mood I'm in, right? I just wanted also, you know, I love to point out like really exotic animals. Uh, Predatory Fins put up a really cool video of this like crazy, crazy goldfish. It looks absolutely insane. It's like, it's like, living art i can't even believe how beautiful this koi is i'm not going to even talk about it i'm just going to put it up so you guys can actually while i'm babbling you can look at it it's absolutely beautiful it really just needs music and it just needs to have its own moment so check it out obviously you can see it's dark here i waited till late at night to feed pablo has already gone home so i figured you know what while i'm just perusing the collection We'll just knock out a couple videos here. Tomorrow, I have an idea for a good video, so stay tuned for that. It'll be a little bit more comprehensive, a little more instructional. And guys, if you have any suggestions for videos, please put them in the comments below. I love topics, especially educational topics. If there's stuff that you don't understand that you'd like me to explain in videos, please either email me directly, text me, I don't care, or put it in the comments below. All right, if you like what you see, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. See you back again tomorrow morning.